Now I know what you're thinking. What am I even looking at? Well, this white expanse behind me is actually not the pearly gates of heaven. It's sand dunes. And they're truly unique. I'm at White Sands National Park in southern New Mexico. What makes this area really special is that the sand dunes here are made out of gypsum. It's the largest gypsum sand dune field anywhere on Earth. And today, I'm going to explain to you how it formed. And of course, to explain how it formed, we're going to have to talk about geology. All right, there is a lot to cover, but I'm going to try to make this as digestible as possible. So let's go back 250 million years ago. The Earth is made of large regions called plates. They move separately, driven by complex currents in an inner part of the Earth called the mantle. There is dense oceanic plates and less dense, buoyant continental plates. 250 million years ago, these plates were arranged a lot differently than they are today, and White Sands, New Mexico was at the bottom of a massive sea that dominated the area. Changing climate in millions of years caused the sea to evaporate and recede. This is the key to White Sands' main ingredient, gypsum. Gypsum. What even is it? Well, when the ancient seas used to be here millions of years ago, they completely dried up. And when they dried up, they left a lot of solid stuff behind that precipitated out of the water. Two things that precipitated out of the water were calcium and sulfate. And as the water evaporated, these two minerals combined and formed gypsum. Gypsum in its solid form is actually called selenite. Gypsum dissolves in water super readily, so conditions need to be perfect for a full-blown sand dune field to be made of the stuff. So let's dive deeper into these conditions. Fast forwarding to 80 million years ago, weird interactions between an oceanic plate called the Farallon and the North American plate gave birth to North America's piece de resistance, the Rocky Mountains. The Rockies actually stretched down to southern New Mexico. The aforementioned gypsum was pushed up and became part of the foundation of this section of the Rockies. 30 million years ago, more funky plate tectonics began to occur. I'm going to rapid fire this section. The Farallon plate, which was now mostly under North America, was doing something known as a plate rollback where a subducted plate changes angle, causing extensional stress on the plate above it. The stretched crust applied less pressure on the underlying hot mantle rock beneath it. This spurred something called adiabatic lift, where the hot mantle rock rose upwards to the area of low pressure and rapidly expanded, causing further spreading and rifting in the southern New Mexico region. Finally, the San Andreas Fault formed along a weird boundary between the Pacific, Farallon, and North American plates. This caused a heavy rotational stress on the southwestern U.S., creating, you guessed it, even more extensional force. All this extension caused the ancient southern Rockies to literally split apart from each other, creating a basin in between the two split pieces. Down below me is the product of these two ancient parts of the Rockies spreading apart from each other because of those extensional forces I was talking about. Behind me is the Tularosa Basin. In order to explain how the white sand dunes formed, we need to start here in the Sacramento Mountains, as well as the mountains behind us, the San Andreas Mountains. See, these are the two key players when it comes to how all that gypsum got into that basin. Different climate thousands of years ago weathered and eroded gypsum stored in these mountains, transporting the gypsum down into the Tularosa Basin. It collected in a giant lake known as Lake Otero. Lake Otero was prominent during the last ice age around 12,000 years ago, but rapid climate change following the ice age caused it to dry up, leaving a bunch of now exposed gypsum in its wake. Lake Otero still somewhat exists. In the southwestern corner of the dunes, a seasonal lake known as Lake Lucero stands as the last remnants of this once mighty lake. Dry weather, 
small eroded gypsum grains, a contained mountain basin, and consistent strong winds swept the gypsum up, forming the beautiful sea of white sand dunes that exist today. These perfect conditions allow these dunes to thrive. Gypsum doesn't really form sand dunes all that often, because first off, it's really hard to get it into a solid pulverized state because it's usually dissolved in water. And that's also the reason why it's really hard for sand dunes to form, because if there's enough water in an area, all this stuff would just dissolve. So it just so happens here in southern New Mexico, in the Tularosa Basin, the conditions are just right for something this magnificent to form. Less containment and the sand would be swept away. More water and the gypsum would be dissolved. It's truly the perfect environment for this to occur. And there you have it. That is how the beautiful white sands, probably one of the rarest sand dunes on earth, formed. Thank you very much for watching this video. I release videos like this every two weeks, so be sure to like and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more. And I will catch you on the flip.